In this video I'm going to show you how to use the hologram Photoshop action. Uh, so this is the photo I'm going to be uh, using in the demonstration. I'm going to play the action and recreate this effect. Uh, so as you can see, as I zoom in a bit here, that it takes our subject and um, transform it, transforms it, so it's completely made out of lines. You can see that the lines kind of um, distort based on the tonal values of your image and uh, yeah, the action comes with a lot of color options and ways we can customize the effects, so I'll go into that. I'll just quickly uh, click through some more examples that I've got. And also in this video, uh, I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna show you how to add text and seamlessly um, design it so that it fits in uh, with all the other design elements around it. Lastly, this one to that. Okay, so let me close these down and start off from scratch. So there are a few things you need to just check off uh, before we run the action, just to ensure you don't run into any errors um, and that you get the best result possible. So uh, look into your layer panel, and the first thing we need to check is if your photo was set as the background, so it must look identical to this. So if you open up your photo and it doesn't, so I'll just delete that. So if it's called something else, just go to layer, new background from layer, and it sets it as a background. Still in the layer panel, head on up to the top right hand corner icon, go to panel options, just down the bottom, make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is selected, click OK. Next, go to image mode, make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. And most importantly with this action, if you go to image size, what you should do with this effect, even though this the, image, uh, the size of this photo isn't too bad, it could be uh, much bigger, what I recommend you do every time you run this action is to rescale your image regardless of its size. So uh, if you have your photo and it's you know the same uh, or kind of around the same resolution as this. What I want you to do is just um, highlight the largest number out of the two and transform it to anywhere between 3000 to say 3500 pixels. Uh, I'll show you why when the action's finished that why this doesn't really matter. Um, but if you're working with the photo say over 4000 pixels, don't scale down. Basically the higher resolution the better with this action. Uh, just, just don't open up a photo that's like, you know, 500 pixels and then scale it up to 3000. Try to open up a photo that's a decent size uh, already. Basically, uh, rescaling uh, your photo to around 3000 pixels will make the lines uh, much thinner and much sharper. It will just add a whole heap of um, detail to your image and it's going to make the effect so much better. So, scale it up. Uh, I might actually turn this one a bit higher, say 3300. And I'm going to click OK. Just going to let that resize. Zoom out. So the next step is to create a new layer. So go to Layer, New Layer. And it must be called Brush, B R U S H, all in lowercase. Click OK. Now, with the brush layer selected, we need to um, brush over our photo or trace around uh, our subject. And that's going to be the area where we apply. Uh, most of the effects to. So uh, rather than watch me do that, I'm just going to open up one I've already done. This one here. So as you can see, I've done a really bad job of tracing around this guy. Um, it's all on the brush layer, you can see that there. So that's uh, pretty much ready to go. But what we need to do now is load up the actions panel. So go to window actions, it'll pop up here. Go to this top icon and go to load actions. 
select hologram.atm. Here it is here. And that's it. So there's going to be uh, a couple pop-ups during this action. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click play and wait for them to come up. Okay, so here's the first one. It says, in the next step, please save the file. You can name it anything you like. You will need to reopen this file shortly. Click continue below to proceed. So just click continue. And what you need to do now is just save this file and you can call it anything. Um, because yeah, like I said, in the next step, uh, we have to reopen it. So I'm just gonna call it photo. Click save. The, uh, the action continues and then it gets to the next window. It says in the next step, click okay on the first window that pops up. In the second window, please reopen the file you just saved. Click continue below to proceed. So just click continue, click OK. And now just open up the file that you just saved. So I'll just double click on this. And that's all we need to do. So the action's gonna now play to the, to the end. Uh, it's gonna take around three minutes to play back. So just um, jump on the net or do something else for a few minutes and uh, come back and yeah, see what you got. But, I'll fast forward this video and, uh, and then we'll jump to all the layers and talk about how to customize the look. Alright, the action stopped and there's the default result. I've, re I've applied like a blue color grade uh, for the default look, but I'll show you how to change up all that. So I'm going to close the actions panel and go into the layer panel here. Now, uh, what I recommend to do straight away is with the folder that's already selected, uh, I want to collapse all these folders here, so I've just got a neat workspace. So to do that, hold down Control, Alt, or Command Option on a Mac, and click on the arrow on the hologram folder. And what that's done, it's just collapsed all the folders. So yeah, it's all all good to go. Uh, if you want to run the action again, uh, I've left the brush layer on at the top, so you can just delete these three layers here and uh, click play. Alright, so I'll come back to the adjustments folder. Uh, that's just a lot of ways, like a lot of color options and ways to fine tune the look. Firstly, I'll go inside the hologram folder and let's talk about everything in here. Okay, so the first thing you'll probably want to do if you're running this photo um, on people uh, as a subject, what I like to do first is like, especially with their face, is to clean it up a bit so it's a bit more visible. So you can see this guy's mask here, it's a bit, um, it's not as prominent as his body um, and I want his face to really be the focal point of the design. So how to do that, if you go into reveal original photo, this folder in red, if you go inside there, down the bottom here, reveal original photo. Now if I turn this on and off, it does nothing. Uh, but what you want to do is select this mask, okay, and grab a white brush. So make sure white is the active color here. Hit B on the keyboard, get your brush out. Um, use a soft brush. Now if I just brush over his face now, you can see that I've brought that right back. Like it's uh, basically overridden all the effects. So if I hide this mask, you can see all it is is the original photo. It's sitting there, uh, but it's waiting for you to brush onto this mask to reveal it. But what I uh, like to do is to not have it um, be so much different from all the other effects. So you can see that there's basically no effects applied to his face, but everywhere else is really strong. So what I like to do to make that bit more blended is if I just double click on this mask, I'll bring up this uh, the mask properties here. And if I drag this feather amount to the right, all the way up, you can see it's basically feathering out the area that we brush so you can soften it out. So that way if I slowly drag to the right, I can bring back the original look uh, before we brush. So, you know, just find a balance. Um, you know, it looks good. So I'm gonna leave it about there. Uh, and what you can also do, say if I brushed on more areas like his gun, his arm like that, you can use all these layers here to adjust the look of the area that's uh, you've brushed. So you can use this one here, 
um, play around with the opacity. So I've got boost contrast and in brackets opacity. So if you move your mouse over the word opacity, click and drag to the right and left, you can increase and decrease the uh, contrast of just that area that we've revealed. Um, you can adjust the brightness here, play around with that. Uh, you've got saturation, so you can like crank the saturation up. Basically, use those if if you're revealing parts of your photo and it doesn't uh, blend seamlessly with all the um, elements around it, like the colour, the contrast. Just use that to fine tune. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill this mask in black again. Um, I'm just going to read it the face like that. That'll do. Okay, so jump to that one first to, um, yeah, for the, the parts of your photo that you really want to stand out a bit more. Okay, so up to the top here, I've got this one, Dark in Edges. It's turned off by default. If I turn it on, all it is, it just adds like a vignette around the borders. Um, it's there if you want to use it. Tick it on, see how it looks. This one here, Increase Noise, Change Opacity. This is definitely one you want to play around with. Um, I'll just zoom back out. If you, by default, the opacity is very low, 10%, but watch what happens when I increase it um, to the right. So I turn up the opacity. It brings on a lot more noise, but it starts to create a completely um, different kind of effect. So that's really cool. So 0%, and I'm slowly dragging to the right, you bring in noise, and it makes it look much more staticky. So uh, if that's an effect you want to go for, then play around with that. Uh, a little tip, say if I wanted, you know, most, I want, say, the background, the area around my subject to have that effect, but not him. This mask below, any one of these masks, so you can see um, this subject that's outlined in black here. Now, if I hold down Alt or Option on a Mac, click on that mask, and then drag it on top of this mask, it will replace it. So you can see that it's added that mask instead of the one that was there. So now I've hidden all the effects um, that were over the top of him from this layer. So it's just applied to the background. But say that I just want, um, I want to bring back some of the effect over the top of him. What I can do is double click on this mask and just lower the density of that down a bit. So you can see if I bring it to zero, basically gets rid of the mask. 100, full effect, so you can bring this down get something that looks cool, that looks pretty good. I might just bring down the overall capacity of this. About there, that's good. Okay, so that's that one. This one here, uh, soft zoom glow. By default, the opacity is low, um, so I'll crank this up to 100% so you can see what that does. Basically adds uh, a, a glow from around your subject. Uh, so check that out, drag, check the opacity. With any of these layers, as you're clicking down, just take a quick look up at the opacity, and if it's low, turn it up uh, higher to see how it affects your design. It may look a lot better. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, glow 1 and Glow 2 are just... Um, so that that's Glow 2 there, you can see that working. Glow 1 sort of applies, uh, takes all the white values, in your photo and blurs them out so it adds a soft overall glow. Now if your subject is mainly white that's one layer you're probably going to want to turn off like jump at these two, flick them off because um, it might just be too strong with white, too many glows, your subject being white, lots of white lines so turn those off see how it affects the look. Alright so we talked about that one, reveal original photo this one here, glow dots, if I turn that one off, so you can see there are those more prominent dots there. Uh, inside, I've just got them all uh, layered, so you can turn them on or off. If you want all these dots to be much more prominent, what you can do is just select the folder, hit Control J or Command J, duplicates it, and then uh, yeah, it's basically stacked it on top of the other ones, so it just boosts up uh, yeah, how visible that is. So I'll turn them off. All right, this one here, boost contrast. Again, I've got in brackets opacity. With any layer that I've got in brackets opacity, just take notice of it. 
um, so I'm recommending that's one you play around with. So this one's 50%, I'll bring it to zero. 100, zero, 100. So 50, 100, 100. So you can see that there. So that's one you want to start off at zero, slowly drag to the right until you get something that looks cool. Okay, uh, glitches one and two. This one just adds uh, just some random noise and lines. Uh, so you can turn that one on and off to see what you think. You can even duplicate it, control J, make it more prominent. Glitches two is an interesting one uh, and one you should definitely play around with. By default, I've turned it off, right? But when you turn it on, uh, what I might actually do, I might turn this noise down a bit. First, and glitches two. So as I move that around, you can see that it's added some um, some glows and lines in the background, but what that actually is, it's a duplicate of your subject scaled right up. Um, I've masked it so it doesn't intercept with the subject, so it just hangs around the edges. But you can see it adds some like cool lines and glows in random spots. So turn it on and then experiment with like just moving it around. It can just add some like really cool background detail. And what I also like to do is try rotating it. So I can go edit, transform, uh, flip, uh, rotate 90 degrees. So you can see now you get lines going in a different direction. So it creates like this crosshatch effect, uh, which I think looks really cool. So definitely play around with that one. All right, clouds. This is just a very soft uh, effect. Just adds a bit of, I guess, atmospherics. Um, Opacity is low, turn up to 100%, 0, 100, you can see that there. Light booster, if I turn this one on and off, you can see that it just adds uh, a lot of contrast, boosts the brightness in um, random areas. Okay, so these layers here, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn them all off and start from the bottom here. So this one here, outer lines, if I turn that one on, these are all the lines, uh, actually I might just turn this one off for a moment. These are all the lines that appear outside of uh, your subject. And it's lines that sort of curl and sort of wave a bit um, before it hits your subject. So you can see the lines curl in there, curl out. Um, okay, so that's that one. And above it, you can change the brightness of it. So you just double click on that. Um, you can turn that right up make it much more, much brighter. Uh, yeah, play around with that. So inner lines, if I turn this one on, these are the lines that start to appear uh, within the area that we brushed. Okay, so you can see the lines becoming distorted as it starts to wrap itself around the details in our photo. Okay, um, again, there's a layer here that I've set up where you can change the brightness uh, you can make it darker. So play around with that one. Now these ones here are the, are the layers that make it really pop. So if I turn this one on, you can see all that is, is what I've done is uh, I've overlaid the original photo. I've set the blend mode to color dodge. Okay. And if I go inside this mask here, um, you can see that I've only made this layer appear within all those white lines there. Okay, so everywhere it's black, it's not gonna appear. Okay, you know that. So you can see that there. This one here, again, you can change the brightness. So I can just double click on this, crank this up. If you wanna make it really visible, make it darker. Now this one, uh, I've got boost main photo visibility. So if I turn this one on, all that is is a duplicate of this layer here. I've put it up the top, set the blend mode to color dodge. Um, it works in a different way, slightly different way to so just adjusting the brightness. So um, experiment with turning that one on and off, change the opacity, um, duplicate it again if you want, control J. See how that affects the design. Uh, but these, these uh, layers here, all these, uh, you definitely want to play around with because that will adjust how visible uh, your main subject is and how prominent these lines appear. Alright, I'm going to turn that back on. 
Okay, so looking pretty good. What I want to do now is, uh, well, basically this one here, the background color, you can double click on this and you can drag, create a new color if you want. Um, but I would say to try and use darker backgrounds, the effect works the best for that. Um, but you can just experiment uh, with the background. Uh, you can also, you know, import your own background and place it right down the bottom here where the background color is. Alright, uh, now I'm going to go up to the adjustments folder and cancel that inside here and I'm going to tell you what's going on in this folder. So these uh, top four layers uh, are the layers you can use to adjust the overall like brightness, contrast and whatever. Um, if your design. So this one here, overall saturation, I can double click on this, play around with the saturation, and take the color out, turn the color right up. Overall brightness, you can play around with that, make it darker. That. If you want to use a single color to override everything else, just turn that one on and you can just play around with the colors here. Overall contrast, uh, again I've got an in brackets opacity, so if I yeah, drag this opacity up, it crunches the contrast of your design, play around with that. So these are the fun ones here, the color options, so the way these work is if you just um, go down and turn the eye on for that folder, just like that. So I think uh, that's the one yeah that's the one I'll use for the moment but yeah you can go down um, check which one suit your design you can also mix multiple ones together so like, I could turn that one on say I could use 50% um, of that layer uh, I could turn this one on use a little bit of that layer go down the bottom here try that one use a little bit of that layer so yeah, you can build your own color looks in here as well. All right, where's that effect I had before? This one, the other one's pretty cool, so I'm gonna keep that. Um, and that's basically, that is basically it. Um, I'm just gonna play around with these layers a bit more. Um, darken the edges. Turn this down just a little bit. The original photo. What I like to do is when I think that I'm done, I'll go back through the layers. I'll turn it quickly, flick them on and off, um, so you get a good, just a quick overview of you know whether it looks better with it or without it. And I quickly play around with the opacity. I think this is looking pretty good. Okay, so now what I want to do is add some text. Uh, I want to add the word hologram through the middle here, but I want it to um, really fit in with the, with the design. And this is really easy to do, okay? So I'm gonna just collapse this folder and I'm gonna create a new, uh, a new layer. Hit uh, T on the keyboard, get my text tool out. I'm just gonna Create some white text and I'm going to type out oops. Okay. I'm going to type out hologram. Let's turn it back to black text, I'll have to fix that up. Okay. Turn that to white. Okay, so at the moment, it's just plain text. It's adopted the colors um, because I've put it below the adjustments folder. So that's probably what you want to do as well. So if I went to here, change the colors up, 
it's going to apply those color grades to the text as well. So keep that in mind. Whoops, delete that layer. Okay, so how do I get lines to run through this, add um, glows and blurs and all types of things? So if I set the blend mode of this layer to overlay, you can see that immediately that's um, it, it's overlaid the lines, and you know if I move that around, it changes it changes uh, colors. It just adopts all the luminosity um, from the layers below, which is pretty cool in itself. But um, I want to make it a bit more prominent, add a, bit, a few more effects. Now, if I duplicate this layer, okay, it's made it brighter. That's what I wanted. But the problem at the moment is that. If I wanted to change this text, I have to type it out two times here. And if I say, if I want to add a motion blur to this, so if I go to filter blur, motion blur, I have to rasterize the layer to continue. So if I click OK and add some blur, okay, so that's looking a bit better. But what's happened now is it's flattened this, it's flattened this layer, so I can't change that word now. It's stuck at hologram. So the way to do this is. What you want to do is just type out um, type out the word once. I'm just going to set. Oh, I'll keep it overlay. What you want to do is just right click and go to convert to smart object. So what that's done now, it's yeah, it's converted to a smart object. But what we can do is apply blurs um, to it, and it will keep the text layer intact. And if I um, if I duplicate this layer over and over like this. If I change the text inside here once, it's going to update all those other layers. So I'll show you how that works. But firstly, let's work on the effect a bit. So set to overlay. I'm going to duplicate it. Control J. Um, I'm just going to add some motion blur. Uh, motion blur. Like that. I'm going to actually just a bit. Control J and duplicate again. I'm going to motion blur it again. Uh, that's probably looking pretty good. I'll try to duplicate one more time, see what that looks like. Might just maybe offset it a little bit. Uh, I might grab this bottom one here, Control J, Control T to scale it. I'm just going to scale it out. You can see that after I've scaled it, it's applied that motion blur. Um, close those. Turn that one off, it might be getting a bit too strong. Okay, so now I want to change that word to say awesome. Okay, so to do that, you can double click to go inside any one of these four layers. Just double click. Uh, just turn that one up, just say don't show again, click OK. So here is our text. You can see our text layer, hologram. Um, but one thing you might want to do is give the canvas a bit more room. So say if I wanted to type three words here, um, three lines high. Uh, it's not going to fit, so you can go to image, canvas size, and like just crank this up. Say, um, so now I've got more room. So if I just change this to awesome, uh, if I click back into the document, you can see that it hasn't updated because what you need to do inside a smart object is that you need to save it and close it before it updates. So if I hit Control S. Save it, Control W, close it, and now you can see that the text is all um, updated now. So I can, um, yeah, move all those around, or I can group it like that. Move it around that way. Okay, so that's how you uh, can easily add text and you know make sure it sits in really well with. Um, all the design elements around it. Uh, now, what I want to do is add another element of detail. I want to add lots of um, numbers in the background here to make the background look way more detailed. So again, I'm going to do hit T on the keyboard. Now, I'm going to drag out a text box this time. I'm just going to click and drag over this area like that. Okay, now inside this text box, I'm just going to start hitting some numbers. Um, I'm going to change this to 18 to 
so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just got typing out numbers here. I'm going to hit Control A, select all that. Now I need my um, paragraph options here. Oh, sorry, the character options. Uh, I want to change the leading to um, auto. That's just basically the height between each line of text or numbers in this case. So what I want, what I can do now is just highlight sections and copy and paste it. So if I, if I just go Control C, Control V. Control V, highlight different sections, so it's a little bit different. Paste all that down. Okay, I want to make the numbers smaller. So I'm going to go Control A, select all again. I'm going to change it to say 10. Hit Control C while it's all selected to copy again. I'm just going to paste that again, paste all that down. Okay, I'm just going to hit the Move tool to accept that. So now I've got my layer of text numbers everywhere looks shocking so what can I do I need to set the blend mode to overlay and now you can see if I zoom in here whoops it's added all this text that sort of blends in with all the lines the dots in the background um, so if I zoom out you know you can play around with the opacity of this so you can just have it really subtle um, but another, I want to use that mask trick again because I don't want the numbers to appear over um, the subject. So I'll go inside here. I'm going to grab that mask again off soft zoom glow. Click on it. Hold down Alt or Option on the Mac. Click and drag, move it on top of the text layer. And now all the numbers have disappeared um, over the subject. Okay. So that looks pretty cool. I mean, now you can uh, you can duplicate this layer. Hit Control J on the text, uh, and you could say double click on the text, highlight it all. You can make it way bigger, like 24. So then you've got some um, huge numbers. And uh, what you could also do actually is if I select the mask, if I go to uh, Filter Render Clouds. Uh, basically, if I go inside this mask, everywhere that's uh, white, the text is going to appear. Everywhere it's black, it's not going to appear. So you just get that irregularity now um, of where it appears. And I'm going to um, brush away over the subject. It's probably a bit too strong. Probably don't even need it. Yeah, it's probably a bit too too detailed now. So um, there we go. That's essentially it. I have one more play around with the colors Bottom. we'll just leave it how it was I think there was that one there I'm going to change the text back to hologram Control S, Control W, close it down. Um, it's gonna, I'm gonna turn that one off. Probably a bit too intense. Um, might just scale this up a little bit. Um, now the this one here, I'll turn this down just a fraction. And there we go. That's the design all done. Okay, so I'm just going to compare this against the original, see what I created. So, yeah, with this action, you can now get designs done like this in no time at all. But just remember that really important step of resizing your photo at the start. Um, because if I kept that same resolution, these lines would be much thicker and um, it doesn't really look that great. So uh, if you're using photos, say under 2000 pixels or 2500 pixels, scale it up to between 3000 to 3500. Um, but if you're using above 3500, don't worry about scaling down, okay? So if you are stuck with the action, just give me an email um, and I'll help you out. Uh, if you think of any other creative ways to use the action, please share it with others. 
um, that would help me out a lot. Uh, but yeah, if not, have fun using the action and see you soon.